few days ago I showed this device in a video that Paul made me for operating my Smiko friend for operating the buttons so stop me getting RSI and I've been so pleased with that that you're going to make one for the Puny Runes as well aren't you Paul? Yeah, but, but this is a different design using a different principle, isn't it? Yeah, the so the first one used solenoids, but this time we'll be using uh, electromagnets. So this is the what we've got so far. Three electromagnets mounted on some uh, 3D printed bits. And the Cooney runes will go here. And obviously it's not finished yet, but the idea is that these little metal fingers will lie on top of the buttons and be hinged at the back, about here. And right. when the electromagnets uh, are turned on by some maybe stylus, as we mm -hmm. had in the other one, uh, these pieces of metal will be pulled out and they'll press the buttons each time the electromagnets uh, turned on. It'll pull the metal down and it'll press the button. That's the idea. And this one should be less cumbersome shouldn't it because it won't have to be powered by a socket in the wall be able to be powered by a battery yeah like all second versions of things it's uh, a little bit more compact and the electromagnets don't take as much power as the solenoids so we can use battery power so it should all be handheld for you so you can do away with the buttons and use a stylus and you're thinking of using a lithium iron Rechargeable battery. Yep, single lithium ion cell to power the electromagnets. So, Paul, you've been doing some more work on yeah. this avoid RSI device. Yeah, we're going to make uh, something to automatically press the buttons for you. So, I've just been doing a bit of electrical work. We've wound all the electromagnets, three of them, one for each button, and each one's got a, a soft iron lever that it pulls down onto the button. And uh, the electromagnets have got these termination wires that come out and we just, because they're thin, we're going to solder them onto some copper tape pads here before we do any more wiring because they're liable to break otherwise. Okay, Paul, so you've done some more work. What is it? Well, we've wired the electromagnets to some copper foil pads. Oh, yes, I can see. And we've got the metal fingers all bent in the right shape. So let's try powering them up. Okay, so it's not doing anything yet, is it, the middle one? Right, they're not pressing hard enough, are they not? The magnet's fully attracted. You can see it's moving, mm. but uh, the fingers needs uh, either something underneath it or it needs bending down a bit more. Yeah. So you've got it working now, Paul? Yeah. So what have you done? These metal fingers have to be bent just right. All right, so you've bent them over. So you've not put anything under the metal fingers, you've just well, bent them over. Well, I was experimenting by putting the little shims underneath them, between the button and the end of the metal finger, and or bending the metal fingers to get the, the right profile on them. And uh, all seems to be well now. So, so you've just bent the fingers in the end? On two of them I've bent the fingers, on one of them I've tried putting a shim underneath. Right. Great. Yeah. So Paul, you've done quite a lot of work on this since the, the last little video clip. We've uh, put some diodes in to uh, suppress the sparking on the electromagnets. We've added a bit of wiring in. We've put some side pieces in here. What's the side pieces for? Well, we're building this up piecemeal really. There's no overall design, which is why it's got a bit of a Frankenstein form to it and um, we're interested in the function really and I've not sat down and designed an overall design for it it's just been done as we go along so I originally started assembling it like this and it's stuck on the the round base what was going to be the base with just blue tack at the moment but mm. then you decided you wanted to have it like this yes uh, so I just decided to print a couple of side pieces to support the weight of the game like that so ah, it, it didn't right. move on the blue tack yeah 
And we've got some more 3D printed parts for it here. I'll put a link in the description to the Thingiverse listing of this because it's a guy who's put it on Thingiverse who's designed it. It is, yeah. We've just downloaded it and printed it out. But they're um, battery holders for 18650 cells. So we printed three of these and we put the metal contacts in. So these have got to be stuck together. We've got a, a base for this to sit on. And the wires come out this hole in the side, don't they? They will do, yeah. And the, the batteries will go under here somewhere. Not quite decided where yet. So you can see it's, it's getting rather large. It's getting really big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of a Frankenstein construction. But hopefully uh, it'll work in the end. These are the batteries that that battery holders for, aren't they? Yeah, they're uh, lithium iron. Um, 18650 cells and uh, this beautiful battery holder that this chap off Thingiverse has designed it's got an integrated spring into it so yeah it's got a, an integrated 3d printed plastic spring here because they normally have metal springs so we can just have but because it's got a plastic one you can just have metal uh, simple metal contacts mm, brilliant design isn't it and such a great fit as well and He's put these cutouts here so it's easy to take your battery Yeah, you out. can just put your fingers in like that and uh, pinch the battery and it comes out pretty easy. Brilliant. Yeah. So, Paul, you've been doing some more work. Yeah, we uh, assembled the battery compartments together. So they all glued together. Uh-huh, and then they were stuck on the, uh, the base of the stand. Mm -hmm. um, and you've made two side pieces here. Yep. Uh, the batteries are wired together to give us 12 volts and then these two side pieces stuck over the top of the ends of the pack and given us four, uh, sorry, given us three brass contacts that you can touch with a stylus. So you can touch like that and that'll operate the buttons for you. Yeah, it's going to have some sort of metal in the middle of it, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just going to be... Um, it's like a stylus with a metal tip, a wire running, running through it and the end of the wire comes out and connects into this wiring at the back, which has got to be done yet to make it all work. And here it is completed. So here's the stylus. That turned out really neat, didn't it? Mm, it did. And there's the back all completed. You did all the wiring and you made this 3D part. Oh yeah, you can see the wires under there. So I'll give a demo. So this is the middle button. Long press to power it up. Oh, he wants to get a seed. As you can see, my kid's now an adult. And this is actually one of the rare. Oh yeah. Pony rooms, there's only three rare ones. Mm. So we'll press the middle button again. Oh, it's just had a poop. And again, we've got all our options there. It's just had a poop. Use this button, which is the select button on the left. To select the toilet. Well, notice when you use the toilet with this uh, adult Poony Room, he seems to go on some sort of white inflatable when the water comes in. <laughs> I'll just do a close up. He's sad because he doesn't like poop in the room. Yeah, he's on some sort of white... It's like a, a white duck inflatable. Like a potty. Oh, it could be a potty, couldn't it? I thought he was on like a plate inflatable because water was in the room, but you think it might be a potty. Yeah. So how do you find the, um, the stylus and the touch pads in, in comparison to pressing the buttons? It's a lot easier on your wrist when you're someone who's had repetitive strain. I don't know what it is about pressing buttons, but it's like that same sort of action as when you use the button on a mouse. Mm, and like it, small it sort micro of irritates yeah. it. So you find this better then? Oh, definitely, yeah. I also find it better than the first one you made that we showed at the beginning of the video yeah. with the solenoids. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot less cumbersome. Mm. And we've got plans for making another one for the Tamagotchi Uni, haven't we? Yeah, version three, hopefully even better than version two. So it would be possible, instead of using a stylus, to use some other input method, like uh, breaking, a, um, breaking a, a beam, beam of light, 
one for each button. So you could just wave your fingers in front of a sensor. Yes, we have talked about that. That'd be really interesting having different input methods, not even like using the stylus. Mm, either a beam brake or a reflective infrared beam. The thing I'm interested in though for this next project is to use the same method mm -hmm. of electromagnets and fingers that press the buttons. Yeah. But to have the option of having an Arduino control it. Oh yeah, so you've you've got a stylus, but you can flip, you can throw a switch and have the Arduino control it in certain situations. Yeah, in the sort of situations that are really quite sort of repetitive and boring, like if you go to the supermarket to buy food, while you're at the supermarket, you'd buy like large quantities of one type of food. Right, so you find that repetitive and boring. Boring. And you'd like the Arduino to play that part of the game for you. Yeah, so I would use a stylus to put it in the supermarket. And then you would select, uh, maybe have an input button on the Arduino for, let's say, four input buttons, A, B, C and D, and each one operates a certain sequence of button presses uh, yes. to do certain things, like go like and buy, buy food. Mm. Mm. He's still sad because he wants feeding. It's like on this device, this particular character won't eat the food that you've got an endless supply of. Like gummy bears. The gummy bear. Mm. It won't eat it, it'll only eat pineapples. So you've got to like play the games to get the cash. And then you've got to go to the supermarket. And then you've got to buy all the pineapples. And then you've got to cook the pineapples before you can feed them, which is... A, bit labour intensive. So you'd like an Arduino to do that for you? Well certainly to take out the, the element of having to buy each one. Yeah. Taking it taking that idea to the extreme, would you like uh, an AI that could actually see the screen to play the game for you totally and not just <clears throat> and not just sections of it, but to play play the game totally while you just sit back and watch? Sometimes, yeah. I mean I like to see, I like to see the virtual pet. I like doing things like this, like actually handing it the pineapple. But like the other stuff can be draining. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, it would be nice if you had a nanny, wouldn't you? A sort of robot nanny to uh, <laughs> look after it when you, yeah. you uh, weren't feeling like it. It, it, it's to watch it. It'll also be good watching, uh, just going back to the Arduino Nano idea, watching the Arduino Nano press the, press the um, operate the electromagnets and move the fingers on the buttons. That should, be, should give us quite a thrill. Yeah, I'd really like to see the these little metal fingers moving by themselves. Mm. And I would find it entertaining, as I say, actually watching the pit being fed for instance or watching the room being cleaned mm. because i don't always want to do it myself mm. i like watching it mm. so as in reality neither of us likes vacuuming uh, the house and uh, we prefer the irobot rumba to do it just uh, in virtual reality you don't like cleaning the floor but you would like an arduino nano to do it for you well interestingly the tamagotchi uni to clean the room it has a rumba. Does it? But you still got to switch that rumba on. Ah. But it has a rumba. Nice. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I've seen it on videos. Oh, look, much. look forward to seeing that when you get it out of the box. And just like you did there, sometimes it's nice just to give it a squish. You don't want to do all these chores. You just want to give it a little squish. Yeah. Well, this the button that you operate, the squishy button, is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But pressing buttons is these ones. Yeah, normal buttons. It can be yeah. very rapidly become irritated. Yeah. Mm. Any ideas about how you will do it differently for the Tamagotchi Uni? The Tamagotchi Uni is obviously tiny compared yeah. to this, so that's going to make a difference. Well, we'll be staying with electromagnets. Uh, because it's, it's worked well on this one, rather than solenoids, which we had on uh, yeah, version 1. Yeah, because this is one. better. It's yeah, better. Yeah. Uh, but obviously the Tamagotchi Uni is smaller. Hopefully the button presses are, are lighter. And maybe it's just a matter of scaling uh, something like this down and making a neater job of it this time. And in making it 
will you bear in mind that you're going to have the option of it operating off of an Arduino? Will that make the design different? Yes, a, li a little bit. For Everyone... instance, the base, you, obviously you want a big base to incorporate... An Arduino Nano. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, a switch to mm. turn the Nano on and off, mm. or maybe... Uh, and, and some input switches for the Nano to uh, operate various sequences, for button presses, yeah. I suppose a slide switch might be nice. So you can have like manual or automatic. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Slide mm. switch, two mm. position switch. What do mm. you think of that? That's a good idea. And we could choose a nice tactile, clunky one, maybe. Yeah. Something with a good, rather than a micro. Yeah, something with one. a good feel to it, like an old-fashioned like switch. I like slide switches mm. though. I think the uh, the feel of old-fashioned switches is far better than modern ones. Mm. Or in fact, military switches which you can buy, but they do tend to be rather expensive. So that wraps it up for this Avoid RSI on the Poonie Runes project. And I hope you'll join us for our next project, which will be on the Tamagotchi Poonie.